In this video, we're gonna talk about five things to never do as a plumber or a homeowner, and we're gonna talk about it right now. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I've been plumbing over 38 years, and I have every master endorsement in the state of Texas. On this channel, I'm teaching you everything you need to know about plumbing. If you haven't been here before, please subscribe so you don't miss anything. So as a plumber, you know that sometimes you're gonna to have to cut into a water line. Now, earlier I said plumber or homeowner because sometimes homeowners may decide to work on their own plumbing. And you know what, I get that. Here in Texas, as long as you own the house and you are the registered homeowner, you're allowed to work on your own plumbing and do anything plumbing. Now you still have to register it, you still have to pull a permit, you still have to get an inspection. So there's still things that you have to do to make sure that you do it as well as any plumber. So the first thing that I'm gonna tell you as a plumber or homeowner, either one, if you're cutting into a water line or taking one apart, turn the water off. Guys, I can't tell you how many times, now remember, I've done commercial work, I've done residential, I've done new construction, I've done service, I've done all of it. I cannot tell you how many times I have seen plumbers or other people cut into a water line that's live or start unscrewing something thinking they're going to change something out and water just starts spraying everywhere guys remember if you are working on a water line turn the water off turn it off before you do it make sure everything is good and secure and tight before you start putting it back together that way you don't have any leaks that's one thing when i teach people how to work on their toilets or garbage disposal or, or anything else. You know, make sure you don't have any leaks before you start turning everything back on. Now, the way to do it, like on a toilet, after you've turned the water off and you've rebuilt things, slowly crack the water back on. That way, if there's a leak, you can crack it back off real quick, snug up what's there, and then go from there. Second thing, and hopefully most of you plumbers know not to do this, never use a saddle valve. Guys, saddle valves are something that, God, I remember them around when I was a kid. And it's literally a clamp that you clamp on a water line that goes in and makes a hole and allows water to actually penetrate the line or go through the line that's hooked up to it. The problem is these old valves tend to leak a lot. Now, Man, they were a great idea, and, and I love the theory behind them, and even in some big commercial jobs, I've seen them bolt on valves like that. Now, I'm not saying that they're not good, but guys, why not go ahead and just spend a little bit more time cutting the water line, installing the T in a valve, or doing something like that? Homeowners, man, these saddle valves, they look great, and you can get them at the box store, but I'm telling you, if I were you, I would take it apart, put on the right valve, and have something that's gonna last you forever. You will be much happier in the long run, and as a plumber, if you're putting these in and charging people for it, man, that is just not a good way to do business. Number three, if you're threading something and you're having to put Teflon tape on it, guys, make sure the Teflon tape goes the right direction. Now, I understand a homeowner not understanding this, but you as a plumber, make sure that when you spin it on, it goes clockwise the same way you're gonna screw the fitting on. That keeps it from loosening up and possibly leaking. Guys, Teflon tape is a great tool to have. Now, whenever I was out at Texas Instruments for so many years, the engineer that I worked for would have us put a very thin coat of pipe dope on, then Teflon tape, and then a very thin coat of pop dope on top of that. Now you may call that overkill, but I don't think we ever had anything leak putting it together that way out there. And we were working on some pretty good systems and pretty good pressures. So make sure number one, you put it on the right direction. And if you add a little bit of something extra on it like pop dope, chances are you're gonna have a good shot that it doesn't leak. Now, when you're putting this together, this leads me to number four. Do not over tighten. And guys, it really doesn't matter if you're working on a gas system where you're screwing together threaded pipe or a compression nut on an angle stop. Guys, over tightening can actually cause leaks. Now, on gas pipe, we, we know that we've already used oil on it to cut the threads. So now we wipe it off really good. 
Now you can put Teflon tape or pop dope or both on there. And that's going to give you a good lubricant. Measure. See how far you need to go in. Measure the depth of the threads on the fitting and then screw it in that far. Now, after you've been around a long time, you start knowing how far to screw things in or how many threads you should still see. Guys, all I'm saying is don't over tighten. It can cause problems. Now, a neat little trick for a compression nut on an angle stop is lubricate it. Either put a little bit uh, of oil or whatever you might have on your fingers, maybe even just a little water. I've seen people spray WD-40 on the outside of it. Now remember, you're gonna flush it out, but tighten it up with that on there. It tightens much smoother and easier. And once you feel it getting good and snug, turn your water on then and check. You don't want to have a leak, that's the biggest thing. And if you over tighten it, there's a very good chance you're going to have a leak and now you're going to have to go back to the supply house, get more fittings or materials in order to fix this, when really, you should have just not over tightened it to begin with. Now the last one, and this is mainly for homeowners, hopefully as a plumber you know better, don't use drain cleaners. Drain cleaners really are not good for your pipe. I know that there's multiple brands out there, but most of them are acidic drain cleaners. Now, plumbing, if you're living in an older house, you've got cast iron pipes. It's metal. And the acids will start eating that away. After years, the coating on the inside of the pipe, or maybe where it was cut and put together, all that metal being exposed, once you start pouring acid in it, starts eating it away. And you can literally tell if you run a camera down a sewer line that people have had problems for a long time and they've been pouring drain cleaners in it forever, you can see what we call channel rot. And the bottom of the pipe literally starts rotting out. Now, PVC pipes probably aren't near as bad because the Drano comes in a plastic bottle. We're talking plastic pipe. I'm not a chemist, I can't tell you what all chemical properties there are in this pipe and this bottle and whatnot, but I'd say you're probably a little better off with that if that's something you feel like you have to use. But guys, get a sewer machine, do the job the right way. If you've got a stopped up sewer, there's really only one way to clean it out properly and that's run a sewer machine. And then run a camera behind it and see what the problem is. Do you have a break? Do you have a collapse? Or is there something in there that is really a problem? Maybe your kids flush something down the toilet. What is in there causing this problem? And if you run a camera after you unstop it and you don't see it, whatever it was, chances are you pushed it out. Guys, if you do any of these things, please leave me a message down here below and let me know why. Because I always try to tell homeowners and other plumbers, new and up and coming plumbers, things that they may want to know to help them do better. But if these are things that you do on a regular basis, man, leave me a comment down below and let me know why. Maybe it's just something that I'm not seeing or something I just don't understand. I hope you enjoy these videos. If you do, please remember to subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on anything. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber, and I'll see you on the next video if you don't get flushed.